Hello and welcome to Witchwood. This is Jewel Smith. And I tried this game for a Try It Tuesday a couple months ago. There was a free demo on Steam. I played it on my PC and streamed it on Twitch. Unfortunately, there were some audio issues and I wasn't able to use the recording of that stream. I couldn't edit it into a YouTube video to share with my YouTube viewers. But the game, the full game, has come out today. It is December 9th, 2021. The game was released for Steam, Epic Games, GOG, Nintendo Switch, Xbox, and PlayStation. So I have a review copy, a streaming copy was provided to me by the publisher, Whitethorn, Whitethorn Digital. And I'm going to stream it from my PlayStation 4, and I'll stream it here on YouTube my entire playthrough. I have been so excited to play this game. I really enjoyed the demo, and I thought that the story was intriguing. I enjoyed the gameplay, I enjoyed the art style, I enjoyed the music, everything about it. it I think this is going to be a lot of fun. It is a crafting adventure in a fairy tale land. That's what they've been saying about it, and that does seem to be what it is <laughs> when I played the demo. It was developed by Alien Trap Games, published by Whitethorn Digital. And uh, when I checked earlier today, it was 19.99 on Nintendo Switch, Xbox, and PlayStation, but it was only 17.99 on Steam, Epic Game Store, and GOG.com. So if you prefer to play or you can play on PC, you could get it for a couple dollars off today. Uh, I don't know how long that lower price will last, uh, but if you're on Switch, Xbox, or PlayStation, it's about 20 bucks. Um, I don't know how long the game is. When I played the demo, it took me about an hour or so. And I think I just played through the intro, and it looked like there were several other... Because I made it to a hub of... Uh, there was kind of this, this hub area with lots of doorways that led off to other levels. So I'm going to assume that every one of those doorways is another level of the game. And so there's lots of levels. <laughs> so I'm, I'm guessing maybe 12-ish hours. Some people probably play a lot faster than me. I mean, I might take up to 20 hours. I, I take forever when I play games. That's just how I am. Uh, I don't know. Some people might blaze through it <laughs> in four to six hours or something. I, I don't know. Uh, but we'll find out. In any case, I'm going to stream my entire playthrough. Probably not today. <laughs> But over the course of this uh, next week or so, or however long it takes. And I hope you'll join me for that. Hello, Ice Stella. Hello, Celtic Granny. Good to see you both. Welcome to the chat room. Let's start a new game. I may have to go into my settings. I'm not sure what I need to set. We're in a swamp. And once upon a time, there lived an odd little witch in an odd little house. She spent most of her days tending to her odd little garden and resting in her odd little chair. On this day, however, her sleep is interrupted by an odd little noise. It's a goat saying, Mah! I thought that's what sheep said. <laughs> that's what sheep said. <laughs> oh. How does my voice sound? When I tried this game before, uh, the music and my voice and the sound effects were very uneven. So do let me know if it if I'm if I'm hard to hear as I'm reading the text. If you can't hear me or if the music is too loud, I can go into the settings and we can change things up. Who's there? All right, let's get up. 
And there we are! Yes, we use the X to interact. I'm using the joystick to move around. And there's that music. It's gonna start drowning me out. Yeah, let's... Let's turn down the music. Can we... Yeah, can we turn that down, please? 10%. Just, just softly in the background. All right, I want to be able to hear the sound effects. Sometimes those will give us clues and cues and things. That's important. But the music definitely does not need to be that loud. Maybe 20%? Is that too much? Dialogue sounds on. Sure, we'll leave it at that. General volume. We'll take that down to 80. And if we have to change it, we will. Let me know. Dialogue speed, sure. Camera sway on, I, I guess. Okay. Let's continue. There we go. Okay. I feel better about that. Ah, uh, let's see. I think I can interact. This is an ingredient here? Can I do anything with that? No. Ah, oh, there's a chest here. Can't interact with it yet, though. Alright, let's talk to the goat. You devil, how dare you wake a young lady from her beauty sleep? Bah! Shoo shoo, get out of my house, you mindless beast. You're making a mess. With a swift kick in the rump, you boot the goat through the front door. Alright. When did this place get so cluttered? I could have sworn I swept the hearth just yesterday. First things first, my old grimoire must be around here somewhere. Yes, I think the grimoire is the book. There we go. Aha, here it is. It's lighter than I recall. Your grimoire contains all of your craftable recipes. You can open it at any time by pressing the triangle. Okay. We have learned mending pol poultice, poultice, however that word is pronounced. Mending poultice. Uh, we need some green, green herbs and a red mushroom. All my recipes are missing. That damnable creature has chewed up the pages of my book. Where's my belt? I'll need it to carry my things if I'm to go confront the beast. I must have left it in that trunk over there. Okay, this trunk over here? There we go. A simple rope waistband keeps items handy. We'll take it. The imp eye nut. Yes, that's uh, an ingredient. The reedy twine. That's a crafting component. And the Seeker Vine. Alright, we'll take it all. Ooh, my poor back. How long was I napping for? A good dose of medicine ought to soothe these aching bones before I head outside. At least I still have the recipe for my mending poultice. Okay, now we can pick up the forest herbs. And I think there was some mushrooms over here, yes. I don't think there's anything else we can interact with. Can't open the cupboards. If we can interact with things, then they get a little highlight around them, I believe. That's what it looks like. Alright, we need to craft the mending poultice. All right. Oh, nope, can't craft another one. Oh, we're all out of the forest herbs. Okay. All out of forest herbs and spices. Oh, I love that skull over the fireplace with the wreath around it. That is so cool. I actually have something kind of like that on my fireplace right now. I have a, a wreath 
with a deer with antlers. No, I didn't want to use the mending poultice. Oh, it says use it. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm supposed to use it. Okay. Uh, R1 or R2 to heal. R2 it says at the bottom, but up there it looks like it says R1. Alright, well... That works well enough. Oh, we have three hearts now. And now we must go outside. Okay. Let's do it. We have stepped out into a humid marsh and immediately stub your toe on a twisted root. We are in the overgrown yard. Okay. Ouch! Close your eyes for a wink and the next thing you know the whole yard's gone to the weeds. Somewhere in the distance you can hear braying through the dense bramble. Where'd that cross-eyed billy goat get to? He could at least put those gnashers to good use on this lawn. Press the touchpad to open your map and get a better look at your surroundings. Oh, okay. Zoom in and zoom out. Oh, Billy Goat is over there, it looks like. Now we can access our grimoire, our inventory. We have a tool belt and we have ingredients. We have the map. We are in the Hag's Grotto. <laughs> And we can track our objectives. Okay. Now I think we need to have shears. Yeah, some shears will cut these cleanly. Alright, we don't have our shears yet, but we will. We will eventually... Alright, we gotta figure out how to get through this. This is gonna be a gateway, I think, into that hub that I mentioned. Oh, look at her little claw feet! I love it! Can I pick these? Yes, I can. Seeker vines! Can't get in there yet. Oh, The level of detail that I can see playing it on my large screen TV versus my small laptop screen. <laughs> Smaller laptop screen. It's nice. I like this. Alright, goat. Bah! Is that all you've got to say for yourself? Bah! The goat coughs up a disgusting hairball. Ah, oh, yes. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Apologies. It's been so long since I've used a mortal vessel. Yuck. There's dirt in its mouth. Pluh. Pluh. You can talk? Of course I can talk. Has your mind become so filled with cobwebs? That you've forgotten your old friend? You wound me, madam. It's good to see you up and about. I was beginning to wonder if you'd ever awaken. Though I suppose time flows strangely in this place. Anyway, I've come to collect. Do you have the amount we agreed upon? The amount? Amount of what? Oh dear. If you really don't remember, we should go over the contract details again. Down there. Down there. The goat nods its head toward the ancient stone gateway looming nearby. Oh yes, the gateway, uh-huh. And just how am I supposed to get through that solid rock? 
You're the one who sealed it last. Take a closer look and I'm sure it will come back to you. Open your witch's eye with a square button to inspect objects and creatures and discover their weaknesses. All right, I remember this. We have a stone pillar. All right, no, I think this stone pillar is the gateway into the hub area. I'll help you out. Trust me. I don't trust that goat. I really don't. Okay. Don't underestimate your senses, my dear. You may be old, but you can see things others cannot. Hidden weaknesses lying below the surface. Ah, I can see it now. There are shallow runes etched onto the surface of the stone, but they are too faint for me to read. A powder of unveiling ought to do the trick. If you hadn't made a snack of my book, I wouldn't have to retranscribe my recipes. I shall not be held liable for any losses or inconveniences incurred as a result of abyssal possession. <laughs> By inspecting objects and creatures, you can learn new recipes to craft new grimoire. Okay. Great. Craft an unveiling powder. Alright, so if I look at this, it's weak to unveiling powder. Yes. How do I make an unveiling powder? I don't know. Do we have the un Oh, we already have the unveiling powder recipe. Okay. Oh, and I think I have enough stuff to make it. Okay. Use the unveiling powder near the shrine door. All right. Ah, see, and when I'm close to something where I can use this, there's that little purple swirl that kind of flies around me there. Okay. And I use R2 to cast a spell. <gasps> Shrine entrance. You smear a handful of the glowing powder onto the runes of the doorway. A cool blue light emanates from the glyphs and envelops the entrance in its aura. You squint, attempting to discern the meaning of the letters. They appear to be in some obscure runic alphabet. What gibberish is this? It looks like it was carved by a frightened hen. Hmm. It must be written in the umbral tongue. Allow me to translate. The goat steps up to the doorway and pauses. Hmm. Well, what does it say? The goat swings its shaggy head towards you. Dark matted wool obscures the creature's beady eyes. I cannot see. Unbelievable. What help are you then? I didn't come here to help. I came to collect. Now, do something about this mop of hair, would you? Fine, fine. I think I have some rusty old shears down in the garden. Alright. So now we can get the shears. We have to cut the goat's hair. There we go. And we can also use the shears to cut the reeds. If I remember correctly. Yeah. There we go. I snip them. I've got the shears highlighted. I snip them with R2 and I pick them up by hitting the X button. Anything else to snip around here? All oh, right, the goat's hair. <gasps> I wonder, can we cut these? Nope. Nope, can't cut them. I guess we have to remove them by some magical means. Oh, let's use our witch eye. Vine tangled ruin. These old stones are tightly wrapped in innumerable vines. Weakness to shears. Well, I have shears. But it's not letting me use them here. 
As you hack at the thick tangle of vines with your shears, the tendrils seem to double in density and threaten to swallow up the doorway, no matter how hard you work. Where do you think you're going? You haven't forgotten about me again, have you? Oh, okay. Can't go there until we do this other thing over here. Got it. <laughs> All right. A quick snip. With much protesting and a nicked ear, you shear away clumps of dirty hair from the goat's eyes. Ah, much better. Oh my. Were you always this grotesque? Or is my memory failing me as well? Ah, oh, isn't he a handsome goat? Watch your tongue or I'll give it a good snip too. Now, can you read the runes or not? Ah, uh, yes. Um... A space beneath, she sleeps alone, tokens given up to the unknown. Fires of four shall unroot the stone, braziers burn and await the crone. Crone? Who is it calling a crone? And what are these tokens I'm to burn? Perhaps you ought to take a closer look at those braziers. Alright, we will inspect the shrine. Braziers. We need dog hair. We need a blue feather. We need frog slime and a shiny stone. All right. I don't suppose you swallowed up any of those things while I was asleep? I don't think so, but feel free to sift through this creature's leavings if you want to be completely sure. No, I don't want to sift through your leavings. Mr. Goat. However, there's a whole world outside this little swamp, you know. See that gateway over there? The one with the lovely green flame? Yeah, the one I was just trying to get through and you yelled at me? The goat motions to the far side of your yard. I guess a brisk walk in the woods would do these creaky joints some good. Too much time indoors is bad for the humors. All right, well, I'm gonna go grab this mushroom here. All right, so now I can come over here. Oh, there's another ingredient. Yes, I'll take. I don't think if she, I, I don't know if she has a weight carry limit or what. I don't I don't think she does. Oh, Kelsey Cranny, <laughs> your son got three deer this year. Oh, wow. And one of them was an eight-point buck. <laughs> wow. Celtic Granny is asking if I'm going to play the new updated Skyrim. Uh, the anniversary edition? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm good with Skyrim. I played the special edition... Uh, I, I'm really not interested in the Creation Club and mod stuff for Skyrim. The, the Everyone who owns the special edition is going to, to supposedly get fishing and survival mode and a few other things for free. Uh, I, I haven't loaded my game to look and see if I have those things. Uh, and then the Anniversary Edition comes with, I guess, all the mods and stuff, all the Creation Club packages and things. I don't know if there's a graphics upgrade on it or not. I, I, I don't... I, I, I know. I'm not going to give them any more money. To be perfectly honest, I'm kind of mad at Bethesda. Um... You know, I bought Skyrim, I bought Skyrim Special Edition, I bought Skyrim VR, and I bought lots and lots of Skyrim merchandise, official merchandise, uh, and then they turned around and put out Fallout 76 and Starfield and basically said, you know, we'll get to Elder Scrolls 6 when we get to it. No, you know, I, I in good faith I gave them lots of support. I tried to, to show them with my dollars that I wanted more Elder Scrolls single player games. And they didn't care. I, I'm not a huge Bethesda fan person to the extent that I'm just going to buy anything they put out. You know, I'm not that interested in Starfield because I'm not that interested in space games. 
I'm not at all interested in Fallout 76 because I'm not interested in multiplayer games. So, you know, I, I feel a little bit betrayed. <laughs> I feel a little bit like, you know, they're not interested in me as a player, so I'm I'm not going to give them any more money. No. Not, not another dime if I can help it. If that makes any sense. And plus I have so many other things to do. I mean, I want to finish... I want to play Witchwood. I've been looking forward to this. Uh, I've got to finish Fallout 3. Um, I want to play Outer Worlds again with the DLC. I never did play Outer Worlds DLC. They put out a couple of DLC for that. So I'm going to do another playthrough of Outer Worlds. Uh, I, if I can eventually get a hold of a PlayStation 5, I'll play God of War Ragnarok when that comes out. And I really like indie games. I think most of this year I've been getting into a lot of indie games, especially Whitethorn. Uh, the publishers that published this game... I mean, Alien Trap was the developer, but Whitethorn published it. And Whitethorn also published Calico. And they published Teacup. Both of those are games I played this year. Um, I'm, I'm just... I don't know. I'm, I'm more interested in smaller games that are easier to digest and you know less expensive and I like the idea of supporting smaller developers so that's where I'm trying to put more of my focus I mean I know it doesn't matter in the greater greater scheme of things you know but those that got bought by Microsoft and I'm sure that they are gonna sell plenty of copies of Starfield and you know plenty of people are playing Fallout 76 they're not gonna miss me but you know I just I can't in good faith support a company that's not working on the things I want to play you know so eh. I mean uh, and like I said I'm not that interested in all the creation club and mod stuff I mean I guess if I was if I was really into having all the creation club stuff then maybe I would get it again to have all of that but I've tried out a few of the creation club things and I really didn't like them they were extremely buggy and didn't really add anything to the game for me so no nah, I'm, I'm good <laughs> I'm good All right, let's see if we can cut the vines now. Okay, yeah, now we can. <gasps> and we can go into the darkness. Tangled vines, snipping and tearing your shears make short work of the bramble. All right, off we go. To find some blue feathers and dog hair and frog slime and... Yes, here is the hub world. Space between. You cut your way through the remaining vines and suddenly step onto a cold stone dias. Dias? Dias? Time seems to flow backwards, or maybe it speeds forwards. An oppressive star-filled void stretches as far as you can see. Though there is no wind or sound in this void, a warm fall breeze and the chirping of birds seizes your attention. A doorway. All right, so here's the doorway back home. And here's a thing. A hearth seed. We learned the recipe for hearth seed. What does hearth seed do? When thrown sharply against the ground, this seed will spirit you back to cozy comforts. Ah, so it takes us straight back home. Okay. And to the forest. Now, this was an area I played through when I tried out the demo previously. But if you wanted to, we can take a look around. See, there's other... This is like a wheel, and there's spokes. And these other spokes of the wheel have other gateways that seem to hint at what's beyond. Like, this one has snow around it. And this one looks like it has harvest fruits and vegetables and things and barrels. And this one looks like it's got, I don't know what, like a, like there's books here. Maybe this goes to somebody's house? 
Is that a spinning wheel? Alright, this one looks like it goes under the sea. There's some fish and coral and things. This one looks like it goes to a graveyard. Those look like graves. And this one has sunflowers. Well, it said we smelled an autumn breeze, so maybe that's supposed to be summer and fall and winter and... Well, no, this would be fall, wouldn't it? Harvest time up here. I don't know! Or maybe they're just different, different areas. We'll find out. Alright, so the first one we get to go to is the forest. Grab that. Uh, I think it does an auto save. I was kind of worried about saving, but it doesn't seem to have a way for me to save. So, uh, is the uh, is the sound balance all right for you guys? Can you hear me when I'm reading and talking and things? It's not. I'm not being drowned out by the uh, by the game. And what's this? A hatchet might break this apart. Oh, right, yes. Let's use our witch eye. Logger's hatchet, okay. Ooh. Oh, this is showing us where things are. It's like Aloy's focus in Horizon Zero Dawn or something, right? Okay. Oh, hello. Bird watcher. The woman spins around on her heels so quickly she nearly hits you with her spyglass. Ah, you startled me. Can't you see I'm busy with my scientific research? Research? What is it you're looking for with that contraption? Why, the famed indigo tufted forest lark. They're said to be native to this forest, and this forest only. Have you seen one perchance? Indigo tufted forest lark. Is that what's on her head? You glance upwards at the small bluebird perched atop the oblivious woman's hat. I guess so. I haven't. Sorry. A shame. Well, it's never too late to open one's eyes to the wonders of the natural world. You never know what you'll discover. She points at a nearby woodland critter stuffing its cheeks with seeds. Take that squirrel, for example. Spend a few moments watching its behavior and you'll learn everything you need to know about it. Observation is key. Now, if you don't mind, I wouldn't want to miss making an exciting new discovery. The bluebird glances vacantly at you before pooping on the brim of the woman's hat. <laughs> okay. We're picking up all the things. Now let's see what's going on with the squirrel. The squirrel can be caught with a snap trap. Right, I remember that. I think we can make the trap by using some rope and some sticks. But I don't know if we have that recipe. Oh, we do, okay. Oh, right. And whatever those things are. ingredients. The imp eye nuts. Right, 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 right. The nuts are to lure it in. That's the bait. But we need a bundle of twigs. Ah, a reagent. To 
make a bundle of twigs. Oh, wicker work. Right, right, right. A widget woven. We need rope and twigs. Yeah, we got that. Let's make another one. Okay. So let's make one of these. Let's make another one. Why not? Let's grab that. Okay. We want to catch this little guy here. We got him! And now we have meaty morsels. And what's that? Rodent lard. <laughs> okay. Nice. He has a hatchet. I could dig out some coals with the right tool. What would be the right tool? A trowel. Okay. And a locker's hatchet. Oh, there's an impi nut over there. Hello there. I know. I want to talk to this dude. The woodsman. Hi, you there. Give me a hand, would you? With what? You seem to have everything under control. These stumps aren't going anywhere. <laughs> My darn useless son was supposed to help me, but he's wandered off again. Probably to go bother frogs and eat bugs or some such nonsense. Anyway, I need help clearing away some of these dead logs. It's late in the season and the wood has started to rot. Just be careful of the purple mushrooms that sometimes grow inside. They'll make you powerful sleepy if you breathe in the spores. As much as I do love poisonous fungi, I'm not much of a lumberjack. Nonsense! Anyone can experience the joys of splitting a fine stump. Here, my boy won't be missing his hatchet. Alright, I guess we have a hatchet now. Nice! And we got a mushroom. And now we can chop all of the logs that we have been finding. Like this one. Excellent. Okay, I'm just checking in with the chat room. Hi, Stella says, we hear you fine. Celtic Granny says, yes, you sound good. Thank you. Thank you for the feedback, ladies. Hi, Stella says, I don't think I'll be playing this one. I'm busy building in Sims. <laughs> you mean the Skyrim? Celtic Granny was asking you about the Skyrim Anniversary Edition. Is that the one you're talking about? 
Yeah, Celtic Granny says I'm playing it because I like the cool new stuff. I was a little upset after all the money I spent. They just gave it away free. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're basically spending money to play it before anyone else in a way. I mean, that's... I'm kind of that way when it comes to, like, movies and things. Like, I wanted to see The Green Knight. But when it first came out, it was uh, in theaters, but also online. And I think the price was like $20 to rent it. I said, well, I'll wait. And I, then it came down to 15 I said, oh, I'll wait. And then <laughs> eventually it came down to, think I think, like 5 or 10 something like that. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll watch it now. I, and I'm that way with video games a lot of times. It's, it's got to be something that I'm really, really, really excited about and then I might pay full price, but you know, a lot of times I'll wait until it's been out for a while. Well, again, like with indie games, I said I liked playing indie games and that's one reason why, because indie games don't tend to be very expensive. You know, for the price of one big game plus DLC and all of that, I can get like five to ten indie games, <laughs> you know? So... And I was saying earlier when I first started the stream that this one is only nineteen ninety nine, or if you get it on Steam or Epic Games or GOG.com, it's only seventeen ninety nine right now. Uh, when I checked earlier today, you know, which is which is I think it's a lot easier to manage, you know, something at a lower price like that than trying to buy expensive games. Which is one reason I guess why Xbox Game Pass is popular you know people play people will pay one fee per month and then be able to play everything that's on the game pass but uh yeah yeah paying full price is like you're just paying for the privilege of playing it early because eventually games always come down in price right or go on sale at some point you know yeah Oh, I thought I could chop that. Nope. Okay. Oh, right. I need the, the chopper. There was... Oh, hello. What's this? <gasps> Come back here. I'll chop you good. What? Most mushrooms don't do this much wiggling. Weaknesses. Witches grasp. Or logger's hatchet. I don't know what witch's grasp is. What's witch's grasp? Is that a special ability? I don't seem to have. It's not a spell. I don't see it in the spells. Hmm. Uh, but I could use the hatchet, I guess. Oh no! And what's with the deal with the fairy? All right, the ragamuffin must be the kid that belongs to the woodsman. The fairy can be caught with a catching net. Okay. What about the little blue bird over here? A snap trap. Okay. My goodness. Okay. How do I make a net then? Do I know how to make a net yet? I don't think so. Hmm. Hey there, kid. Boy, lady, what's with that great stinking pot on your head? I would ask the same about all those stinking frogs in your trousers. Ah, you're just jealous. The boy fumbles between trying to wrangle all his frogs and swiping ineffectually at wayward fireflies with a shoddy looking bug net. Juggling a little more than you can handle, eh? What exactly are you hoping to accomplish flailing about like that? Are you daft? Me frogs are hungry, so I gotta catch some of these fireflies to feed them. He takes another wild swing, missing his target entirely. Why don't you let me take a few of those frogs off your hands for a moment? That would let you swing at the net properly. Oh, I see how it is. You're after me precious prizes. Well, how about I give you the net and you catch me some fireflies? Then maybe I'll think about trading you one of my froggies. Okay. I will take the net. And I will catch the fireflies.
And fairy dust! Ha <laughs> ha! And I want to get this bird over here too. I wonder if I can put down a little... I don't want to waste the trap though. Hmm. Alright. Got that one. Oh wait, there's another mushroom. Alright, looks like I've gotten all the fireflies. I absolutely hate the fact that I'm about to go hack this little mushroom with a hatchet, but... It's what the game requires. <laughs> okay, I kind of enjoyed it. Changeling root. Ooh. Ooh, what did I do there? I got more fairy dust. More fireflies. Okay. Oh, right. Okay. I'm using my witch eye there. Okay. Alright, dude. I got some fireflies. Well, these hoppers aren't going to stick around with empty bellies. The faster you catch those fireflies, the faster we can eat. Yeah, I got a whole bunch. Or, I mean, the frogs can eat. The boy holds out an empty jar with holes poked in the lid. Alright, yeah, I'll give him the fireflies. The boy shakes the jar, rattling the captured insects like pennies in a piggy bank. Well, these are nice and juicy. The lads are going to feast tonight. Now, about our deal. You agreed to trade me one of your pets there. Ah, what deal? I don't remember making no deep. A frog squirms out of the boy's overalls and plops down by his feet with a wet slap. Dang it! There goes Slippery Pete! He takes a clumsy swipe at the amphibian, but the creature squeezes out of his grasp and bounces into the underbrush. Aw, oh, shucks. I never liked him anyways. If you can catch him, he's all yours. <laughs> Alright, so am I supposed to use the catching net, or am I supposed to use a trap? Let's find out. Yep, I need to use the net. <laughs> Celtic Granny is waiting for a new island to come out in Ark. <laughs> you still playing that game? I know you were saying how much you liked it. All right, we got us some frog slime. All right, so now we need the blue feather, dog hair, and shiny stone. All right, so I think we do need to catch one of the blue birds in order to get the blue feather. Alright, we got some more changeling root. And we got some more fairy dust. I'm just wondering if there's a little blue bird that's going to come back here. I don't see one. Alright, let's move on. Let's check the map. Okay. Ah, okay. There's some objectives over here. Got it. Alright. Let's go this way.
Maybe we'll catch the blue bird along the way. Oh right, and we can chop this thing now. There we go. Alright, let's off this way. <gasps> Another bluebird. Oh, more fairies and things. Ooh, I don't remember this from the uh, the demo. Maybe I'm just forgetting. This is cool. What is this? Ooh, flower petals here. Let's take a look at it. The stag. A stylized image to flatter the self-proclaimed ruler of this region. Commissioned by him, of course, and promptly forgotten. Okay. I don't want to catch the squirrel, I want to catch the bird. Oh shoot. Yeah, I don't want to catch- I want to catch the bird. Yeah, 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 the bird, the bird, the bird, the bird. Okay. Alright, let's put it over there. Maybe the bird will come back. Ah, we got it! Alright, we got a meaty morsel. Ah, we got the blue feather! Alright. Nothing over here. Oh. Can we go any further into the woods? No. All right. More flower petals. back up this way. Oh, who's this guy? Hello? Well-wisher. Oh man, oh jeez, I don't know about this. You tap the man's shoulder and he nearly tumbles headfirst into the well. Ah! What's the matter with you? I could have fallen in. Then perhaps you shouldn't be leaning over the edge like some wobbly stork. What's so interesting down this well anyways? Well, my grandpappy used to tell me that people drop all sorts of treasure down there, just waiting for someone to dig it up. Got myself a trowel and thought I'd give it a go. Oh, he's got the trowel. But the rope's out, and it looks awful dark and damp. I get goosebumps just thinking about all the ghoulies that might be lurking down there in the shadows. Ever consider that those ghoulies might get goosebumps thinking about you lurking up here in the sunlight? Uh, no, not really. Not, not sure if that makes me feel any better. <laughs> Maybe the business of treasure hunting isn't for me after all. Here, why don't you take my trowel? I don't think I'll be needing it. You can go down into the well and see those ghoulies yourself. Yeah, sure, thanks. This old well is deep and dark. You might be able to climb down inside it, but the rope has long since rotted away. A cool breeze wafts up from the darkness. Uh, let's use our reedy twine. We'll toss a length of strong homemade rope down into the darkness. It seems like it should support you without much fuss. Alright. 
Let's go into the well then. Blurp, blurp, blurp. Ah, we got some gold coins. Cool. And we can dig. Oh, get more gold coins and some clay. Alright, let's use our witchy site and see if there's anything to learn down here. Oh, we could have caught a frog down here too. Let me get a little drink. There we go. Ah, oh, we got more frog slime. Cool. Ooh, we got a shiny stone. Excellent. What's back here? <gasps> Another shiny stone. <gasps> oh, hello. What's this? <gasps> Locked. Oh no. I could collect some water with a jar. Okay. Get some frog slime. Oh, I bet we're going to use the clay to make a jar. Right, 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 right. I think I remember that. Hello, what's in here? Hello, how are you? Something stirs inside but does not emerge. Darkened Nook. A cozy burrow for a creature who prefers to be left alone. Oh, okay. Alright. I will leave you alone. That's cool. Alright, let's head back up. We just need dog hair now. Let's head up here. Oh, there's a gate. Bars a witch's way until it deigns to open. Alright. So I guess even after we finish what we need to do here, we'll have a reason to come back. Oh, hello. Kiln man. Evening ma'am. Come to check on the pottery? I'm afraid I just fired the kilns up, so they'll be a while still. Pottery, bah! I was just admiring that fine canine over there. You point to a scraggly looking mutt patrolling the yard. May I give her a petting? Oh, you can try, but I wouldn't if you value your fingers. She's a touch bitey today and doesn't much like people going near the ovens. I have a way with animals. Surely I can find something to calm her down. Okay. Let's use our witch's sight. We must make a soporific morsel and then use our shears to get some dog hair. Alright, I think I've got everything we need to make a soporific morsel. No, what's this? This draft will send whoever drinks it into a deep sleep. However, it tastes horrible. 
So mix it with something delicious. Well, I've got all the imp eyes and I've got the mushrooms. But I need a jar. Okay. the heck was that? Something just hopped off. A tiny dancer born of what once was. A soot sprite. We need to catch it in the net. Got it. Oh, nothing else we can do over here, huh? A box for storing items. Ooh, clay and coins. All right. Well, the dog doesn't seem to be, well, okay, I'll stay away. Maybe I just gotta stay away from the dog. Oh, there's a pot. Empty jar. Okay. Alright. It says we still don't have what we need. Oh, I think I need to go fill the jars with water. That's what I need to do. Yep. Let's go back to the wishing well. Oh, that's the bird watcher. I think the wishing well is down here. There we go. Blurp, 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 blurp. Okay. There we go. We done did it. Got some more frog slime. be able to do what we need to do. Okay. Let's craft it. Yes. Back to the doggy. Oh, there's two bluebirds here. there. See if we catch some birds. Alright. 
Yep, we got a bird. Alright. Ah, uh, doggy is asleep now. Did you find my dog a treat yet? Yes, I did. So now what? Oh, right, I gotta clip hair off the doggy. Frog slime, blue feather, shiny stone, and dog hair. That's all I need for those braziers. I should head back home now. Don't want any more dog hair? That's all I'll get for now. Okay. There we go. I'm just grabbing what I can while I'm here, you know? I'm also practicing the controls. <laughs> Getting used to the controls. Switching between the tools and being able to use them. There we go. Can I get into this box? Oh yeah, I did. I got stuff there already. Alright. Alright, dude. Yeah, I found your dog a treat. It's cool. Alright. We got everything that we needed. Now we gotta go back and open the shrine door. Let's see if we've explored everything here. Everything we could explore. We couldn't get past that gate. That leads off this direction, but we couldn't get there. Maybe we can go this way. I think we need to go back here. Okay, so just run this direction. Past the bird watcher that's surrounded by birds everywhere. Look at all these birds. <laughs> oh, right. We have a hatchet now. Let's do this. Oh yeah, I can't go this way. So we can't go. This is actually blocked off and we can't get past it. But there must be more to the map up here, it looks like. More to the map that we can't see yet. Alright, well let's get back. Back to the hub and back home. Hey Patrick, I see you in the chat room. Welcome. How you doing? Oh, thanks for the hug. <laughs> How you been? We are back home. Let's grab some more reeds. Yeah, the ingredients and items and things, they seem to respawn fairly frequently, so you don't have to worry too much, it looks like, about running out of things. You know what else I really like about the way this game is designed, I'll tell you, is when you go to pick things up, all you gotta do is hit the X button. You don't even have to be that close to them. Like, I'm right here, and I'm like, oh, I want that. And then I just get a little bit closer, and it, it automatically, like, it's glowing. You see how it's outlined? And I hit the X button, the game automatically moves me a step closer and picks it up. I don't have to be, like, right on top of it. It's, it's not hard to get a hitbox to pick things up, which is nice. Very nice. I like it. You know how some games are just really fiddly about being able to get right on top of an item and pick it up. Ooh, the brazier awaits an offering. Sure, we'll put in the blue feather. 
A strong force pulls the feather down into the large basin like a magnet. It bursts into a bright flash of light as cold flames engulf its essence. Ooh. Let's do this one. Glinting brazier. We will throw in the shiny stone. You drop the stone into the basin with a resounding chiming sound. Fractures trace across the pebble before it cracks open and a cold green light swallows it within its flames. Okay. Crusted brazier. We'll throw in the frog slime. You gently squeeze the globs of wet slime from your satchel into the basin. The mucus bubbles and pops before cold flames reduce it to a fine, odorless ash. We'll put in the dog hair. The dog hairs take a moment to fall from your fingers, fluttering down into the basin one by one. The fur bristles into foul-smelling coils before erupting into a cold green flame. <gasps> The shrine entrance! The emerald flames of the braziers place strange shadows across the stone doorway. You watch as fingers of shadow crawl up the rock face and crack open the solid granite like stale bread. The stone crumbles away into darkness, revealing a yawning stairway descending down into the cold earth. After you, madam. All right, are we ready to go? I think we are. Into the shrine. And I think we got this far when I played the demo. And then this was the end of the demo. Sleeping maiden, a beautiful young woman seems to be fast asleep inside a delicate glass coffin. Now if you recall, when I first encountered the ghost, he said, Ah, you're awake, sleeping maiden. Didn't he say something like that? And it came across as being kind of a joke because obviously I'm an old crone. But, but, here's my theory. This is the theory I had when I played the demo on PC. My theory is that I'm actually that young woman. That I made a deal with the goat. Uh, for some reason. Maybe because I wanted to go into hiding. Maybe I was trying to escape uh, a marriage or get out of something. Um, and so I was... I'm, I'm actually the, the sleeping maiden there and my my soul or my spirit or whatever is inside the body of this crone and I'm thinking that as we play through the game uh, the story will unfold and I will discover why I made the deal with the goat to hide me away like this I don't know that's just my theory I know I'm not giving spoilers because I don't know that's that's just my guess but it's very intriguing and I want to find out more, which is why I'm so excited this game has finally come out. This was the end of the demo right here. This was it. So <laughs> pretty much everything beyond this point is all new to me. Encased inside a gilded crystal coffin lies the body of a young woman. Though she sleeps in an enchanted slumber, her ageless features express a deep sadness. The sound of cloven hooves echo against the marble floor as the goat comes to your side. Quite something, isn't she? Do you remember bringing her to me? I brought her to you? Why? Who is she? 
I haven't the faintest idea. All I know is you brought her lifeless form to my doorstep and begged me to save her soul. Save her from what? And why is she asleep? Why, from the twelve wicked souls whom you said wronged her in life. Villains who deceived and cheated her and broke her spirit. And as we agreed, here she will sleep until our contract is fulfilled. Until you bring me those twelve wicked souls. What? I remember no such contract. Our pact is binding, regardless of what you do or do not remember. At the goat's words, you feel something hard and dark locked away in the depths of your heart. It speaks the truth. And just why should I do your bidding? Seems like a lot of bothersome trouble to me. What do I care about some sleeping beauty? Bring me the twelve souls, and I will release the sleeping maiden from her slumber. Our agreement will be fulfilled. Who knows, in time you may even remember why you brought her to me in the first place. Or, you can simply return to the comfort of your little hovel, where you will waste away until the weeds grow so thick that not even your shears will be able to cut you free. And your mind will stay as empty as that grimoire of yours. But it is a big decision to make so hastily. Why don't you sleep on it? A heavy weight fills your marrow. Your eyelids flutter, barely able to stay open. Well, what have you done to me? I, I can't stay awake. And we're back in our house. Oh my gosh! Oh, that is so cool! <laughs> oh yes! And now everything from here on out. This is all, all entirely new to me. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I still think, I think that's what it is. I think I'm actually the sleeping maiden. And as my memory comes back to me, I'll remember why I came to him and needed his help. <gasps> what do you guys think? What do you think is the story here? Alright, well, we have been streaming, I've been streaming for about an hour and 18 minutes, maybe not quite an hour and a half, so we could play a little bit longer. Let's see what else we can find out. Let's see if there's anything I can interact with here in my house? No? Oh, my cauldron. Engraved with magical runes. But it doesn't light up when I stand near it, so I can't really interact with it at this point. Maybe in the future. Alright. Oh, the goat is back. Good morning. I trust you've made up your mind. Will you collect the souls I've asked for? Or would you prefer to stay stuck in this festering swamp? Well, <laughs> I guess if we want to continue playing the game, we have to agree to collect the souls, don't we? No need to get your horns in a twist. I will do as you ask. You haven't given me much choice. Splendid, as it happens, I can already sense the first four souls we seek. Two are in the forest, another in the swamp to the north, and the last in the fields to the south. Could you be more specific? Near a shapely stump? Perhaps inside a tree with a face? By an overgrown mushroom grove? 
What do I look like? A compass? Get out there and look for yourself. New chapter, The Sleeping Maiden. Alright, collect four souls for the goat. We must collect the soul of the bear in the forest, the soul of the ox in the fields, the soul of the leech in the swamp, and the soul of the snake in the forest. Oh, wow. Oh, that sounds intriguing, doesn't it? Well, maybe we can finally go to those areas of the forest that we couldn't see before. The ones that were closed off by gates. Ooh, can I go over here? No, can't go? Okay. Well, I live in the swamp, so... Does that mean I can find the leech here? Right, well... Let's go back in here and see what we can do. I, we know how to find the forest. Doesn't seem like we can get anywhere else, so let's go to the forest. <laughs> Patrick is saying, you want me to be the goat? Yeah, I can't play as the goat. I'm playing as the witch in the woods. Oh look, yeah, now I can go north here. This was all blocked off before, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, this is new. Yeah, remember we couldn't get past... There was a border of trees right here and we couldn't get past it before. Ooh, there's the snake. Song of the snake. A maiden weeps lakeside for her lost lover. And the bear is down here. Can't bear the sweetness. A delayed shipment from the fields angers the bear even further. Oh, and the ox is down here. Okay. Oh, and the leech is out here. Oh my goodness. Yeah, there is much more to this map, isn't there? All right, let's go explore. Ooh, I'll take those. Thank you. And a bait stick. Tempting but deadly morsel for meat-eating creatures. Useful against newts, dragonflies, and bats. Alright. I'll take it. Ooh. Let's see what we see here. What's this all about? Humble Basin. Once perhaps part of a lovely plaza, now little more than a bird bath. 
Ooh, there's the Weeping Maiden, a pretty sad looking woman. All right. Oh, the Weeping Maiden. You approach a young woman weeping sorrowfully into her palms. She catches her breath for a moment and looks out longingly over the placid lake. Oh, my sweet songbird, why have you forsaken me to a life devoid of your love? Tears well up in her eyes as she buries her face once again. You consider leaving this melodrama well enough alone, but something about the poor girl reminds you of the maiden slumbering under your house. You draw out a tattered handkerchief and offer it to the maiden. There, there, dry your eyes, my child, and tell old Granny what the matter is. Oh, thank you. You're very kind. She takes the cloth and daintily dabs the corners of her eyes. Swallowing the last of her sobs, she composes herself before sighing wistfully. It's my beloved, such a sweet and romantic man. Though with a voice of a metal lark. I think that's a typo. Such a sweet and romantic man with a voice of a metal lark. With the voice of a metal arc is what I would say. Uh, he... Yeah, I get it. He dumped you. Well, don't worry. There's plenty of other frogs in the swamp. What? No, he loves me and I him. Though our families would never allow us to be together, he'd come and sing outside my balcony every night. One night we both vowed to escape and meet by this lake. Her lip quivers. I waited and waited under the waning moon, even past the morning sun. But he still didn't reveal himself. Tough break. Maybe he just wasn't that into you? <laughs> the woman snaps at you with sudden vitriol. He would never abandon me. We're destined to be together. She slips back into a melancholic gaze out over the lake. Even now I can still hear the beautiful melody of his lute coming from across the water. Over the dull sounds of lapping waves and quacking waterfowl, faint notes of some faraway stringed instrument whisper through the reeds. Oh, I hear it too. Maybe you aren't just mad in love. It's coming from somewhere in the middle of the lake. He's out there somewhere. I just know it. She crumples into another dramatic bout of inconsolable tears. Now, now, I'm sure it's just some echo bouncing off the shore. I'll go find where this tardy bard of yours has run off to. <laughs> tardy bard. Track quest, display what to do next. Okay. The snake, huh? Okay. Revealed the source of the sounds by the forest lake. Something sneaky is hiding and laughing in the woods. Use item. I don't know what that is. Oh, that. Unveiling powder. Okay. All right, we crafted the unveiling powder. Reveals the source of sounds by the forest lake, right? Oh, hey there. What the heck is are those things? They they don't look friendly. Let's check them out with the witch sight. A goblin. <gasps> Talks big but is cowardly at heart. We need to make a dreadful doll. And how do we do that? Oh boy, with a whole bunch of stuff we don't have. Mm 
Okay. Rady Twine and Skeeter Snoot, huh? Okay. Nope, don't have Skeeter Snoot. So I guess we'll have to avoid the goblins. And then the path just ends right here. Off into the woods, but we can't go any further. Okay. Oh, another goblin. Okay. They get little skulls over their heads, and I guess that means they're going to come at me. Ooh. What a pretty tree. Pixie nest. An assemblage of detritus and fey saliva, but one that some tiny beings call home. Oh, yeah, I see the pixie right there. Elusive pixie. Dancing upon the breeze without a care beyond fairies. Aha! Oh, okay. Oh. I can't catch them unless I use the unveiling powder, huh? Well, I don't know if I want to use it on them. I'm trying to solve that quest, so we'll just have to wait on that one. Went on over here. Ooh, a dryad. Weakness to cinder box. Fairy totem weakness is unknown. Huh. Oh, dang. No, 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 no. Okay. I will leave you be. Alright, so here's where the gate was. And now we're able to get through it. I'm gonna take a look here. Cinder box. Oh, we can make a cinder box. Mm -hmm. All right, let's make one. Uh, where did it go? Oh, it's in here. Okay. Let's swap it out with this. Okay. I get it. So there's like things that we have on our tool belt and then there's things that we have in a backpack, I guess. All right. I got a dryad fruit from it. I set it on fire, I guess. Ha! Ah! Tree seems particularly angry about something, maybe everything. Well, it's even angrier now. But I got a dryad apple from it, so... Alright. Cool. Ooh. What's down here? Oh, that's the kiln guy. Alright. We're up behind his house. The music seems strongest on this shore, but even here you can't quite place the source. 
It seems to be emanating from the half-sunken ruin poking out of the lake's waters. Maybe that fool bard's hiding way out there. Bah, I swim as well as hens fly. Suddenly, some unseen voice chitters mockingly into your ear. Ho ho, he he, the musical man you'll never see. You spin around, but no one is there. Just a nattering laughter bouncing on the wind. Who's there? Show yourself, spirit. Oh, okay. We got the pixie. You snap your hand around the elusive creature and squeeze. Ah, let me go, you knobbly pot. You're crushing the life out of me. You trifling little pest. What do you know about this music? Music? What music? All I hear is the slapping waves and the peeping birdies. Your wrinkly old ears must be full of bugs. Why don't you play smart with me? I'll pop off your head like a daisy. Ooh, you mean that music? It's the sound of the snakes traveling circus. I thought everyone knew that. Circus stays still, but the door is the thing that travels, you see. And right now the door is out on that lake, but you'll never get in. Nah. You give the wretched sprite a good shake and sh a shower of glittering dust sheds off its wings. Tell me how to cross the lake or I'll make a necklace from your teeth. Ah! Only fey folk can show the way. Dirty fairies built a bridge. Keep all you big folk out unless the snake invites them in. You're a fairy, aren't you? Where's this bridge? Ha! We're a pixie. Not one of those flamby pamby mushroom herders. Besides, the bridge is invisible to big stompers like you. The creature peers over your shoulder and waves its tiny arms. Oh, look, there's a fairy now. Why don't you ask her? You turn to look, but in your moment of distraction, the pixie sinks its sharp teeth into your finger. Ouch, you sneaky little blighter. Springing free from your grasp, the slippery monster chitters a laugh and vanishes in a cloud of smoke. You look down at your dust-covered hand. Fairy or not, this bridge must be around here somewhere. All right. I bet we gotta put something in this to reveal the bridge, maybe? Oh, investigate the basin by the forest lake. Yeah, I thought we already looked at it. Pushing aside thrushes and cattails, you find a strangely carved pedestal. It might be mistaken for a bird bath if you didn't know any better. As you run your finger around the edge of the bowl, the remaining pixie dust on your hand flakes off as if drawn by an invisible force. Crude pictographs appear on the surface of the basin. They depict a coiled snake presiding at the center of some kind of festival. Directions on how to reveal the bridge are carved on the outside. You see symbols resembling fey dust, dancing fireflies, and bird feathers. Okay, we're going to need two more bird feathers. Okay, that's cool. We can do this. I still is as it looks a lot prettier than I remember. The game? Yeah, I like the art style. It's very nice. Alright, let's make... We gotta make the... Oh, we can... No, we can't make... Can't make that yet. Okay, we can make this. Let's make some more of these. Yeah, alright. We gotta go find a bird. Oh shit. Oh, that was a dryad. Okay. They don't like these.
But we need more rodent lard. Okay, cool. Let's go find some squirrels. There we go. Oh, and we need that thing too. Excellent. Oh, there was a bird. There's birdies right there. Oh, well, we caught a squirrel. Wait for another bird to land. Go over there and get it, birdie. There we go. Got another blue feather. Yay! Alright. Let's make... Oh, we need more pots to make some more of this. Because I saw some more wolves running around. So we might need some more of these morsels. We have a ton of clay. Can we make some pots? Man, for clay isn't what it used to be. I would love to make some pots though, sir. Can I use the... Oh, who's this? Hello? Quartermaster! Oh, hello there. Sorry, I think I managed to get most of this debris off the road. Looks like you've made a fine wreck. What on earth happened to your cart? Yes, well, you see, I was sent on a very important mission by order of my captain, the bear. The bear, you say? What sort of mission? It, it's my job to make sure that the lakeshore camp is well stocked with provisions. But most importantly, a steady supply of honey for the bear's favorite mead. I was just on my way back from the apiary with a cart full when a, a deer or something darted out of nowhere. Jostled my poor mule so bad that she broke her bridle and ran off. My own heart nearly leapt out of my ribcage. Piled the darn cart right into the ditch, she did. Now every barrel is smashed and I can't bring myself to report back empty-handed. The bear will have my guts for garters, I'm sure of it. This bear sounds like quite a brute. Oh, you don't know the half of it. If he doesn't get his honey mead, heads will roll. Maybe you could lend me a hand? Well, I can't very well put this broken cart back together. No, 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 nothing like that. But you could take a message to the sergeant of the lakeshore camp. He's a reasonable fellow. Let him know what happened. Maybe he can get me out of this bind. 
You can get to the Lakeshore Camp if you follow the road to the northwest of here. I need to stay with the cart and assess the damages. Oh dear. Okay. I guess I have more stuff to do now. Uh, I don't think I want to track that one though. I'm still working on the uh, the snake. All right, collect fireflies from the forest. Yeah, I can do that. Collect fairy dust from the forest. Okay. Oh, right, we have all the feathers we needed. We needed to get more feathers. All right, let's go back to the basin. Mm -hmm. I think it was up here. Yep, here we go. Okay. Back to the basin. And now we have all the stuff we need. Fairy dust, fireflies, and blue feathers. You shake out the fine dust into the bowl and it settles evenly to its inside surface. Okay. Let's use the fireflies. Each of the fireflies alights upon the edge of the bowl, stepping delicately until they are evenly spaced. Placed into the basin, the feathers arrange themselves into perfect triangular symmetry. The basin begins to glow a soft yellow as the fireflies rise from the muck within. They begin to dance up and down, drawing circles high above the bowl. Glitter rains down gently, shimmering as it catches rays of sunlight. Slowly the particles trace the form of a bridge leading from the edge of the water to the center of the lake. You tentatively test the strength of the spectral walkway and find that it is as strong as if it were made of solid stone. And there it is. Ooh, find the snake in the fairgrounds. Are we ready for this? Oh, I don't know. Let's go. This sounds like fun. I want to see a fairy tale fairgrounds. Oh, I love it. The snake would like to meet you. Yeah, I bet he would. Oh, look at this! Let's use our witch sight. Distant strongman. A well-muscled hulk flexing with a faraway look in his eyes. Villager, he's got a thousand yard stare. She's got an odd, glassy look in her eyes. Oh boy. Are they all under a spell here? Chest. Alright, let's go check out the chest. And talk to the strongman? Oh, very nice.
He seems to be in some kind of trance. I'll take that. The snake is good to us. Oh. Can't interact with that guy. What is this? An almost hypnotic motion. Alright, found some coins. And what's this? An egg. Alright. Hi there. Alright, I guess we want to go in and meet the snake in the silk tent. Ooh. Hello there, snake. Weaknesses are unknown. Enchanting to look upon, even more enchanting to engage. Draped in glittering jewelry, the serpent stares intently into a crystal ball as you approach. Welcome, my dear, welcome. I saw that you would come here in search of answers. Pa, I just came here in search of a bard. That's him outside, right? With the loot? The minstrel? Yes, he is working off a debt to me. All those folk out there seem a touch addled. What did you do to them? They're all humble folk looking for something just as you are. I am here to provide them with my services in exchange for a bit of work. So what are you, some sort of carnival wizard? You're making quite the racket in my forest. A wizard? No, no, no. I am a seer, a scryer of the hidden mists, a fortune teller, a foreteller of fortunes, and keeper of secrets. Fancy titles you've given yourself. Sounds like you're nothing but a used car salesman. Cart. <laughs> a used cart salesman. Peddling your wares to the gullible. Ah, skeptic. Step closer and let the crystal ball reveal its mysteries. Yeah, don't look in that crystal ball. That's how the you get enchanted. The snake's voice drops low and seems to fill the tent with a heavy weight. I'm a helper of sorts. An unraveler of knots. I make the forgotten remembered. You feel the scaly touch of slithering coils wind around you but are powerless to move. And you, you have forgotten much. The snake's eyes swirl in a pattern you've never seen. Imperceptible colors collapse into themselves and fracture into kaleidoscopic mosaics against the canvas walls. A voice speaks from far away. It takes you a moment to realize that it's your own. I have forgotten so much. Let me help you find your answers. The serpent's coils slowly squeeze the consciousness out of you. With a desperate push of willpower, you blink away from the snake's hypnotic gaze. Wait, get off me, you worm. You wriggle your body like a sack of loose twigs. Despite your protesting bones, you manage to squirm free and tumble backwards out of the tent. When your eyes open, you find yourself back outside the snake's tent. You pick yourself up from the ground and dust off your shoulders. Ha! Huh. I guess that sly serpent has some tricks up his sleeve. I'd better come up with a plan for the next time I go in there. The festival patrons seem confused after your tussle with the snake, as if the spell over them was momentarily shaken. The crowds disperse as they fumble about in a haze. Now is my chance to get a word in with that bard. Maybe I can get him out of this mess. Weary-eyed bard. Strumming his lute, this strapping young man has a faraway look in his eyes. Is it wistfulness, nostalgia, or even hypnosis? Wander I may, but ne'er away from she I call my lover. To my chagrin, I stumbled in and met the gaze of another. Curious I stared, I was not prepared, and this was my mistake. A binding gaze, now I live my days in service of the snake. 
Cry not for me, for there is she that might still see me saved. My spirits they lift as she holds a gift from before I was enslaved. A mirror, but shattered, its pieces have scattered. If mended, we may be set free. Down the wishing wellspring to the swamp's moonlit ring, and hiding within the pixie's tree. What's all this about a broken mirror? You gave it to that weeping maiden? Speak plainly, you warbling fool. No matter what you do, the poor musician barely seems to recognize, to realize you're there. He just keeps strumming his lute and humming his mournful tune. Uh, maybe that lovesick miss will know what he's on about. Alright, let's get the heck out of here. Alright, let's talk to the weeping maiden and see what she knows about this mirror. Oh, still my beating heart, have you any news about my dear sweet love? I found him at the carnival, but he's been mesmerized by the snake. Unless I can break the spell, no one in that carnival can leave. The snake? Say it isn't so. I've heard how he grants wishes, but only for a terrible price. Why would my love be so desperate as to consort with that charlatan? I haven't a clue, but he's stuck deep. The only thing I managed to get out of him was something about a mirror. Do you know anything about that? A mirror? Oh, yes. It was the first gift he ever gave me. From inside her bodice, she produces a small cracked hand mirror. But one night, it slipped from my balcony and shattered on the cobblestones. I tried to piece it back together, but I could never find the last three shards. Hmm... His song mentions something about a wishing well, a moonlit swamp, and a pixie tree? Keep that mirror close. I'll seek out the missing shards and return them to you. Oh, thank you. I should very much love to see it whole once again. Alright, well, we know where the pixie tree is, and we know where the well is. I think the well is this way. All right, let's go into the well. All right, now, we were in here before. And there was a creature back here, and there was a gateway we couldn't get through. Right, this is locked. This is probably where the mirror shard is, I betcha. Alright. Darkened Nook. A cozy burrow for a creature who prefers to be left alone. Alright. So do you think we could lure him out? You hike up the hem of your skirt from the ankle deep well water and duck down to inspect the small damp cave. A pale shape quickly retreats further into the dark space. You hear a labored breath of some pathetic thing frightened and alone. Hello there, don't worry. I won't hurt you. Bloodshot eyes blink nervously up at you. The creature gazes longingly at the light of the world above, while simultaneously cowering from it. Poor dear, what are you doing down in this hole? I bet you're hungry, aren't you? Two thin, malnourished arms twist out from the crevice. One hand tightly clutches a shard of glass, while the other hand reaches out to you, begging for food. 
Oh, dang, I don't have roast beast. I guess I have to leave. Alright, so how do I get roast beast? Alright, I've got the meat bits. The meaty bits. The meaty morsels. I need witch spice. And campfire embers. Okay, I have that. How do I make witch spice? Oh, right here. All right. Roast beast it is. All right, let's offer this creature some roast beast. creature snatches up the meat so quickly that you nearly lose a finger. It scurries back into its little crevice and you hear a satisfied munching from within. The mirror shard lays abandoned in the silt. Alright, we'll take it. Okay. Alright, well we still don't know how to get into this chest, or how to get through this grate here, this portcullis, this, not really a drawbridge, drawbridge would be, uh, you know, a bridge that you could draw upward, but I think this part with the little spikes here, this grill work, is called a portcullis. I could be wrong. Wouldn't be the first time. found one of the mirror shards. The other one is in the pixie tree, which is up here. Is there fast traveling in this, I wonder? Let's take a look at the map. Alright, so we're here. Have we gone to this farm before? Hang on. I don't know if I remember this farm. Oh, I guess I can't get there. Yeah, look. There's not really a path to go there yet. Maybe that opens up later. Oh yeah, you can see a little bit of the house right there. On the right side of the screen. Alright, that must be uncovered later on. Wow, there's so much to this game. Okay, here's the pixie tree. I think we need to use... Unveiling powder. Alright, let's try that. Mm. Uh, that didn't help me. Oh, here we go. I just had to click on the tree. The snarled tree is littered with countless trinkets and bits of trash, glued haphazardly together to form a glittering hive. You 
reach for a sharp piece of broken glass that could be the mirror shard, but pull your hand away at the last moment. A thousand beady eyes peer out of the tree's knot holes. A familiar cackling voice floats above the others. You again, Kettlehead. What you want now? I've come for that mirror shard. Hand it over and I won't have to strangle you again. No way. We need shinies to keep gross fairy folk away. Best fairy repellent there is. What? Since when are fairies afraid of shiny things? Well, I don't see no fairies around, do you? But maybe we can work something out. Them smelly mushroom herders have been encroaching on our turf, see? They've been building those stupid little stone shrines of theirs, and worse yet, they've been hiring mercenaries to guard them. Oh yeah, that's we we uh, set the dryad on fire. So we can't go anywhere near, but maybe a big stomper like you can take care of the problem for us. And then you'll give me the shard? Hey, if there ain't no fairies, we won't need no fairy repellent. Okay. Destroy the fairy shrines. Yeah, we already did one of them. Okay. So where are the rest? Let's see if we can figure it out. Ah, uh, okay. Over here. Well, we need to have... Oh, right. That one's being guarded by goblins, I guess. Yeah, fairy totem. Okay. Is that what we need to destroy? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. They're weak to this doll. But in order to do the doll, we need grain from the fields and a hopper leg and that thing but we don't know Golly, how in the world am I going to handle that can I just run into the center of it Do the traps work on them? I mean, it doesn't say they do. But we can try it. I don't know. Oh, the squirrel went right for it. I don't know what happens if they try to kill me. Maybe I should craft some healing potions just in case. I need to deal with those goblins first. Alright, well we can't deal with goblins till we make... Make a doll, so that's not gonna happen. I guess we gotta go do something else. Let's go check out this one. Oh, right, that had the wolf. We're gonna need another jar to get some water so we can... Let's see, bait stick. I don't know if the bait stick's gonna work on it. Yeah, I've gotta make that.
but I need the potion and I need water. Oh, I have it. I have water. Where did I get water? I guess I had some spare water. All right. Okay, let's try this. There we go. Got her. Well, I'll take the dog here since I can. Alright, I think that's two of them destroyed anyway. Oh shit. That goes back to the hub. Hang on a second, I've got an issue with a whole lot of spam in the chat room. Hello, absent minded. Welcome to the chat room. Had to deal with a little bit of spam. <laughs> Alright, we were working on the snake. But I can't destroy the last fairy shrine until I can craft this doll and get rid of the goblins, the dreadful doll. And I can't craft the dreadful doll without grain, which I get from the fields, and a hopper leg from the fields. So I guess I need to go to the fields to get those things. Let's take a look at the map. Now we also got a quest to go and talk to someone about the bear and there's an ox there all right so let's go ahead and start tracking these we ran into a guy whose cart had crashed and he wants us to find the sergeant of the lakeshore camp so let's track that one this is the main quest we have to find the bear in the forest, the ox in the fields, the leech in the swamp, and the snake in the forest. Well, we found the snake. So, let's go find the bear. picking up all of these ingredients. Some of them are for making uh, potions and spells and some are for crafting items that we need. Alright, this is the guy with the crashed cart. Alright, we'll move along here. Ooh, what was that? There was a sign there, but then I got kicked into another area of the map. Okay, that takes us back to the forest. Okay. 
we're in a whole new area, the fields. All right, well, we're here. Maybe we'll be able to find some grain and some hopper legs and some other things that we need. Is that grain? It's lazy grass. Okay. Alright. These are some of the same things we found in the forest. Oh, that's nice music though, isn't it? <gasps> Ooh. There's a pheasant. Hello there. Let's look at it with our witch sight. Okay. It doesn't say we can interact with it in any way. It doesn't show us the net or the shears or any traps or anything, so I guess there's not much we can do with it. Can't go in there. Lazy grass. Oh, look at the field of sunflowers. Hello there. Oh, there's a gnome. Perhaps I can puzzle him somehow. Puzzle him. Weaknesses unknown. I don't know what I would have to puzzle him with. Maybe we'll find something. Oh, I see pumpkins bouncing around. <gasps> Pumpkin Jack, an unfortunate byproduct of harvest magic. We can hit it with a logger's hatchet or snag vine. All right, what is snag vine? All right, to make this, we need a skeeter snoot from the swamp. Well, dang it. Oh. How do we catch that? I need that. A catching net. Okay. There we go. Oh, I like the music in this area. Ooh, what's this? A fairy circle. Fey energies converge on this spot, but to what end is unclear. Ooh. Oh, can't walk in there. Let's take a look at the map. We came in up here. Alright, oh, we came in from up here, I think. Okay. And we need to go over here. I'm way off. <laughs> I'm way off over here. Alright. Well, maybe when we come down here. Oh, who's this? Good day to you. Oh, hello.
I need some grain. <gasps> oh, turkey. Eschewing the oblivious charm of its cluckling cousin, this fowl is absolutely terrifying. <laughs> Weaknesses, digestive tablets. <laughs> okay. I guess it's an enemy and we can't get near it. Yeah, it doesn't like us. It's mad. Alright, I'm gonna cross the bridge over here. Uh-oh. These look like some cutthroats. Bandits! Expresses primarily through stabbing. Okay, well we don't want to get stabbed, so let's let's not get stabbed. A crow! Ooh! Let's make a snap trap and catch the crow, why don't we? There we go. Alright, I'll put it there and see if he comes back. Yep, there's another one. There we go. We got a crow's foot. Okay. <laughs> oh boy, what's going on up here? A changeling. We've met those before. <laughs> oh, who's this guy? Vegetal farmer maintains a certain authority despite appearing more gored than man. Okay. What's your deal, dude? A hefty gourd stands before you, wiping beads of dew off his bumpy forehead. He tilts up the brim of his hat and greets you with what you interpret as a smile. Welcome to my farm, stranger. What brings you out here? How's it going? How's it growing, farmer? Oh, you know, not so bad. Trying my best to win the harvest competitions this year. Well, you look to be making good progress. I'm sure you'll be a shoe in for the blue ribbon. You would think so, wouldn't you? But every year, if that fails, that sour ox takes the prize. No matter how hard I work, I can't seem to outgrow his crops. Careful now, you're beginning to sound like a sore loser. Yeah, yeah, not sore loser. I just think it's quite suspicious, don't you? Last year, the ox and his family grew the largest corn cobs I've ever seen. I was only barely able to get second place because of my own little helpers. He motions to animated turnips and potatoes busy with menial farm work. But this year, his crops are larger than ever before. Even though his family is nowhere to be seen, it doesn't make any sense to me. He's working the fields all by himself? What happened to his family? That's the fishy part. No one knows. They just disappeared one day, and the ox has said nothing. Hmm, that does sound suspicious. Perhaps I'll go and ask him myself. Yeah, yeah. His farm is down to the southwest. You can't miss it. I must get back to work. Veggies won't grow themselves, you know. <laughs> oh, okay. We have started a new chapter. The ox. Speak to the ox at his farm south of the fields. The ox seems to be running his farm, his family farm, without the family. <laughs> okay. Hello, Herman! Hello, Starfish! Welcome to the chat room. How are you doing? <laughs> yeah, welcome! This is such a fun game. I'm really enjoying it. I'm not going to be streaming for much longer. I've already been streaming for quite a while. I think I've been doing about two and a half hours. But it's a lot of fun. I like it. <laughs> you, 
I am a witch in the woods. It is a crafting adventure game. Oh, there's a changeling over there. Okay, I'm gonna go get it. Um, but it's it's also kind of similar to some puzzle games that I've played in the past. You have to figure out how to use various objects to solve problems and... There we go. Oh, I thought I saw a grasshopper down here. I think I used the net to catch it. There we go, got it. Um, but yeah, that's me. I'm a witch. I have a cauldron on my head. I don't have any memory though. I have to regather all of my spells and figure out who I am and what's going on. And there is a, a goat, possibly an evil goat who says I owe him something and I have to gather 12 souls for the goat. Uh, so I'm kind of doing that as well as various other little side questy things. Oh, lots of grasshoppers down here. Okay. I have witch sight, which I can use to tell me about the environment. The cow is quiet and keeps to herself. Uh, weakness, empty jar, I guess. I guess the cow can be milked, maybe? And we can put milk in the jar? I don't know. I don't know how to get more empty jars, though. That's the thing I gotta figure out. I really need the jars, because I also need water. I could collect some water with a jar. Yeah, I would love to have a jar. But I don't know how to make more jars. Maybe this will tell me. Oh, here we go. I can craft empty jars by using clay and a campfire ember. All right, let's do it. Heck yeah. All right. Let's use the jar over here. And get some water. Heck yeah. All right, now I got to make this potion. Cuz there's some wolves that I need to put to sleep. And so I need to make this morsel. I have, to, I have to put a sleeping potion into this meaty morsel and the, the dogs and wolves will eat it up. There we go. Let's see if we can talk to the farmer. No. Nope. Oh, but we've got chickens here. A plump and happy hen, witch's grasp. I still don't know what the witch's grasp is. I don't see it in here. I think it's an ability, but I haven't unlocked the ability yet. Like, I can use witch's sight. This is witch's sight. But I don't know what witch's grasp is. Oh. I just... the X button, I guess. Okay. Okay, I have eggs then, I guess. Cool. <laughs> witch's grasp is just my hand. That I used to pick things up. Like I would pick this 
lazy grass here. Okay, cool. All right, I'm glad I figured that out. I was wondering what in the heck. I gotta find some grain though. I seriously need some grain. Okay, what's down here? The ox's farm, no trespassing. Okay. Oh, right. We got a jar of milk. I don't know how much of that I'll need at some point, but might as well grab some while I'm here. Ah, okay. So if we go past the signpost, we'll be in a whole other area of the game. Well, I think we need to do it because we've got to go and talk to the ox who's running his family farm without his family. Oh, but we were supposed to go find the sergeant of the lakeshore camp. Yeah, alright, let's do that then. We came in here to do that to begin with. Unusual hay bale. Well, let's go check that out. What the heck? Hello? Unusual hay bale? Buried in the hay lies a secret to be discovered. Upon closer inspection, this mountain of hay appears to have been deliberately woven into an intricate wickerwork structure. You carefully pluck a single piece of straw from its center and the whole bundle begins to swirl and unravel until a gaping vortex opens before you. A shadowed way. Oh, I wonder if this goes back to the hub. It does! Oh, look at there! We've unlocked another gateway in the hub. Alright, so this goes back to our, our home in the swamp. This takes us to the forest we've been through. And then now we can come back to the fields here. Awesome! Okay, so that's kind of like a fast travel sort of area. Hey, George Perez, how you doing? Thanks for stopping in, George. How you been? Yeah, the art style is really cool. They were, uh, I think there was a tweet from the game developer, Alien, Tra Alien Trap Games. They were tweeting about how they developed the art style and the look of the protagonist, the, the Witch in the Woods character and stuff. I follow them on Twitter. I also follow the publisher, which is Whitethorn Games. They published Calico and Teacup, which I played both of those games earlier this year. Oh, good. Glad to hear it. <laughs> You're doing well. That's good. Herman and Starfish were in the chat room just a few minutes ago. I, Stella, and, uh, and Celtic Granny and Patrick were here earlier. I don't know if they're still around. Alright, so let's see. We gotta go... Ooh, okay, we've been there. This looks like grain fields up here. Maybe I'll find some grain up here. That's what I need. Here we go. Surely no one would notice just this one sheaf growing, going missing. Ripe grain. Okay. <laughs> we need it for the dreadful doll in order to get rid of the goblins. 
we're kind of in the middle of several quests at once here. <laughs> I'm juggling. I'm spinning a lot of plates. I'm juggling a lot here. All right, and I think there were some crows in here. <laughs> certain ingredients and crafting materials can only be found in certain areas. So as long as I'm here, I'd like to grab as much as I can. <laughs> All right, let's take a look around. Oh, that's the apiary, right? Into the forest. Okay. We came here to try to find... Maybe it's the apiary. Didn't he say he had been to the apiary earlier? Alright, let's go to the bees. Gotta dodge the evil turkeys. see what we can interact with. A harried beekeeper has no shortage of bees but having a rough time of doing the keeping. <laughs> Sorry we're closed for the season. You'll have to come back later. Ah. Okay. Oh he's not gonna let me in. Okay. All right we're out of here then. Well, where in the world is the bear? We're supposed to be finding the bear. Oh, it's on the edge of the forest. Okay. So I guess we gotta go back to the forest. Oh, while we're here, let's get some more grain. Yeah, the ingredients respawn too. If you leave the area and come back, they'll respawn. Alright, well there was a shortcut kind of thing down here. We still don't know what to do with the gnomes. Perhaps I can puzzle him somehow. I don't know what that means. <laughs> All right, we'll go in here. And fast travel back to the forest. The Herman and Starfish are still here. Cool. What are you guys up to tonight? Besides watching me. All right, let's take a look at the map. Oh, okay. The bear's encampment. All right, and then this down here is where... Yeah, all right. That's where the guy's ruined cart is, but his encampment is actually over here. And then we're trying to do this snake quest as well, but I can't progress any further until I'm able to make uh, this dreadful doll. Which I can't until I get a sewing kit, and I can't make a sewing kit until I get a Skeeter Snoot. 
which is in the swamp, but I haven't been up in the swamp yet. But we'll get there. All in good time. Let's go find the bear this way. Here we go, Lakeshore Path. Oh, what's going on here? Unenthused sentries. <laughs> A pair of soldiers blocking the way, but not entirely happy about it. A victim of the bear's wrath. Unconscious soldier. Oh no. The bear. A large, ferocious soldier with many a self-aggrandizing story to tell. Oh boy. Alright. Dingus. Hey, where do you think you're going? Dongus. <laughs> yeah, no one but us soldiers are allowed inside the lakeshore camp. Get out of my way. I have urgent news of your quartermaster. I need to speak with your sergeant. Urgent? Only thing that's urgent is the line for the latrine, or if the captain hasn't had his drink. That's right. Captain Bear is in a right foul mood. You can't come in unless you want a good thrashing. The guard almost has to shout over the clattering din coming from inside the camp. You heard him. It's dangerous in there. Wouldn't have the heart to let a frail old granny like you near the beast. One guard turns to the other with a conspiratorial shrug. Yeah, but who are we going to say what's good for her health? Oh yeah, you're right. We might be convinced to uh, look the other way if we was fairly compensated. Right, fairly compensated of course. We'd be sticking our necks out after all. Oh, they just want three gold coins. The guards hold out their hands expectantly like children begging for candy. Alright, I'll give them some gold coins. I have twelve. A bribe. You carefully press three heavy gold coins into the palm of the waiting guard. There, I expect you two can divide them evenly amongst yourselves. <laughs> oh, that's funny. They're going to fight over the third one. Right, one for you and two for me. What? You mean two for me and one for you? I'm the one who does all the real guarding around here. You still owe me for that game of dice you lost. You cheated me. Give me them coins. The two guards fall into fisticuffs and roll into the bushes, leaving the gate to the camp wide open. Yeah, I saw that coming. Oh, George is saying it's kind of cold. I'm working up the will to get some grub, but I'm not a fan of the outdoors right now. Yeah, it's pretty chilly here, too. Starfish is going to be playing Borderlands 3. Ooh, and Herman's just watching me. Don't have any other plans, huh? Alright, well let's see if we can at least get in and find the sergeant, and then I'll probably call it a night myself and go have some dinner. I will take that, and I will take blood. Can be used to give life or hex it away. I'll take it. I don't want to go near that angry dude right now. So I'm not going to try to chase that sprite unless it comes over this way. Uh-oh. I guess I can't sneak around him. As you cautiously approach, the bear drains the last of his enormous tankard and smashes it against the head of a nearby soldier, knocking the hapless man to the ground. And then I walloped him just like that. So next time I catch any of you cowards turning tail, I'll skewer you like a fish and leave your guts for the gulls. Suddenly noticing that his drink has gone dry, the bear bellows to the skies. More mead, you yellow-bellied worms! More drink! Bring me my delicious honey mead! 
The soldiers taking cover nearby exchange nervous glances at each other. None wanting to confront the bear. There is no more honey mead. The bear wipes a strand of drool from his sagging lips and his bleary eyes slowly focus on you. A mocking smirk splits his face as he waves at you with his great spiked mace. Say, now that's a funny looking helmet. Soldier, I ever tell you the time I crushed the bucket-headed barbarians of the western mountains? You decide that now is a good time to leave the bear to his ramblings rather than make yourself an unfortunate prop in his war stories. The bear kicks an empty, empty tankard at you as you retreat back into the camp. That's right, go get me more mead, you good-for-nothing slaggard. I'm trying to find the sergeant. Is this the sergeant over here? It is. The frenetic-looking officer shouts hurried orders at whoever will listen, but most of the camp soldiers are busy cowering or knocked out cold. Man the gates! You over there! Secure the perimeter! We just need to hold out a little longer! Sir, we're running out of men! Where's that damn shipment of honey? You step over an unconscious footman to address the man in charge. I might be able to answer that question. Who the... Who let this old bat into the camp? I found your quartermaster. He's having a bit of cart trouble on the road. I'm afraid your shipment isn't going to get here anytime soon. What? Oh, curse my rusty britches. Without that honey and other supplies, we can't make the honey mead. The bear is going to flatten the whole camp when he finds out. Camp looks half flattened already. What's all the ruckus about? Well, the bear is the greatest warrior there ever was, which is grand and all when we're fighting the enemy. But once we set up camp, he likes to use us poor sods as playthings to reenact his conquests. And the only thing the bear loves as much as fighting is drinking. Guzzles up so much honey mead we have to brew it right here in the camp just to keep up. He points to a squat looking device tucked near some tents, a portable brewery. Without that shipment of ingredients, I don't see how we can ever calm the bear down. He'll smash us all into paste before the sun sets. Let me take a look at this brewery of yours. If the bear is so in love with brawling and boozing, then perhaps it's about time he received a dose of his own medicine. Okay, determine what the brewery needs. I'll use my witch sight. Well, I'm guessing it needs honey. Inspect the brass contraption. A tank here, a hopper there. The bitter smell of alcohol is infused into the well-worn metal. Despite the needlessly complicated dials and tubing, at the end of the day, the brewery is really just a fancy cauldron. This seems simple enough. I should be able to concoct just the potion for your troubles. The rattled sergeant shrugs his shoulders at you. Sure, if you think it'll help, but you'll need to fuel the darn thing first. Our supplies are a mess, so you'll have to figure it out on your own. You open up the brewery to inspect its complicated innards. Oh, dang it. I gotta make a cinder box, and I gotta get five more jars of water. Okay. Hang on. Alright, now I need to make some jars. Mm. 
And I only have four. So I gotta go find some clay. No, I gotta go find... I have plenty of clay. I gotta go find some embers. Embers in here? No. All right. Oh, might be some embers there. Hang on. There we go. All right, but where do I get water around here? I know there's a whole bunch of water right here, but I don't know if I can actually get water from the lake. Let me make another jar. There was a water pump at a camp. Or a farm that I went to earlier. Got him. I don't see a water pump here. get some water. <laughs> hey Jopic, how you doing? Welcome to the chat room. You've got a lurk filled hello for me. Hope you're having a good week. All is well on this end. Just lurking. Take care. Okay, thanks for stopping in. Checking out this game. It just released today. And I like the fact that it released on every platform. I don't think that it's out in Europe yet, though. I saw something earlier that said that the European market wouldn't be able to have it until December 27th. But in the U.S., it's out today on a Switch and PC, Xbox, PlayStation. I'm playing it on PlayStation, so... You know, which I thought was pretty cool. Like, a lot of times, you you know, the PC version will come out first, and then you gotta wait. Sometimes you gotta wait months for it to come out on console, or vice versa, you know. Alright, now in the forest... There's a wishing well, and we can get water there. While we're in here, maybe we'll get some more clay. And gold coins that people have dropped into the wishing well. Herman says, if I didn't see you streaming, I would have gone to bed. <laughs> Aww. Starfish is asking, what are you going to do with the 4,000 grasshoppers? Well, they are an ingredient in a thing. Um, I think it's this one down here. Yeah, there we go. 
to make a dreadful doll. There's uh, goblins and bandits in the game. And, well, there's lots of different enemies. There's, there's dryads, there's fairies, there's goblins, there's bandits, there's dogs and wolves and things like that. And in order to deal with different enemies, you don't have a, like, you can't just chop them with your axe. Your axe is supposed to be just for chopping branches, tree branches. Um, you don't have a spear or a sword or anything like that. You have to use your magic and your crafting. So, like, if you want to trap a bird, you would craft a trap. Um, one of these traps here. Birds, squirrels, and rats. You can catch them with that. Uh, you can catch uh, pumpkin jacks and stick totems with the snag vine. Um, you know, like turkeys. You need to fight them with digestive tablets. <laughs> so, um, there's not really... I mean, the combat component is only in crafting and spells, not in weapons. So... Yeah, so I need the the, uh, the grasshopper legs to make dreadful dolls so I can fight goblins and bandits if I need to. But we need to swap out our inventory. For a jar. And we can use the jars to collect water or milk. I do have some milk. Um, let's maybe, since we're here, I don't know if I can make any more jars. I can make three. All right, might as well and collect as much water as we can. Because I don't know if I'll need it later. And like, I have to use this net to catch a frog. And then I get frog slime, which is used to make things. I use the trowel to dig up the clay. Don't know how to get into this chest. It says it's locked. I can't get in. And this little guy in the cave likes roast beast. But I think I've already... Yeah, I already gave him some roast beast, so he's busy eating. We got a piece of a mirror, mirror shard from him earlier. So let's get out of here. <laughs> Herman says, like, calming a fire-breathing dragon with a fresh mint. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty interesting. It's an interesting way to, to handle things. I've already talked to all these characters in here. That's why I'm just walking past them. But it's great for people like me who love to pick everything up. You know, I love scavenging and gathering ingredients and things. I don't think there's a limit on your inventory. I don't know. I mean, this is an object inventory but then there's also your ingredients I don't know if there's a limit on how many you can carry but it's really cool because it's you know for people who, like me who like to gather things it's an interesting way of, of using those things I've gathered to deal with the various enemies in the game it's pretty cool Alright, so let's get in here. 
I'm gonna dig up some more embers since I can. Get that soot sprite. Got it. All right. Let's open up the brewery. We have the jars of water. Oh, we gotta make a cinder box. Okay, let's make that. Oh, no, we already have two of them. Okay. All right. You slosh cool, clear water into the brewery's main tank. Not the best base for potion brewing, but you want to preserve that honey mead flavor. Okay. And then we will add the twigs. Snap kindling into pieces and scatter it into the bottom compartment of the brewery. Should be fuel enough for the job. And then light the f kindling <laughs> with the cinder box. We used the cinder box earlier to set a dryad on fire. <laughs> um, with a hiss of steam and the sound of boiling water, the rattling brewery is ready for the next step in the process. Of course, I'll need honey for the mead. That quartermaster said he was coming back from the apiary in the field, so I best try there. Then I'll need a proper magical binder and a token of the bear to seal the spell. Something in this camp ought to do the trick. A token of the bear. Alright. Oh, we need honey, metamorphosis, elixir, and a torn teddy bear. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, we can go into the tent. Yes, let's. Through the open flap, you catch a glimpse of pillaged trinkets and treasures scattered about the spacious interior. You surmise that one of these precious objects might contain enough magical essence to use as a token of the bear. Your eyes have only a moment to linger upon the giant fur-lined bed before a hand pulls the door flap shut. The sergeant gives you a disapproving glare as he ushers you away. Hey, you can't go in there. This is the bear's personal tent. You know the kind of hell that would break loose if he finds out someone's been snooping? Don't worry, I'll be careful. It seems like your men are keeping him distracted anyway. You glance over at the bear as he tosses aside a soldier like a sack of potatoes. No way, no how. If you think this is bad, just wait until he finds out there's no more honey mead. If you're so afraid of that stomping brute, why don't you just slip away into the night? Surely it would prolong your life a little. And abandon all my friends? We soldiers gotta stick together. It's our only chance. If only there was some way to stand up to the bear. A thought seems to cross the sergeant's mind and as he notices the potions and baubles hanging about your belt. Say, you're good with magical doodads and what's its right? What if you made me some sort of protective charm or talisman? Then I could maybe have a chance against that monster without getting my head stoved in. If I make you a protective talisman, will you let me into this tent? I suppose I wouldn't have much to worry about if you did. All right, well, I will make you a protective talisman so I can get in there and get the bear, the teddy bear. Let's take a look at the quest so far. All right, we got to craft a metamorphosis elixir. We need to craft a protective talisman for the sergeant and we need to inquire at the apiary in the fields. How do we make a metamorphosis elixir? Oh, there we go. A wicked gemstone. Oh, we need that for the talisman. Oh, I got all the stuff I need for that. <laughs> we need embers and a shiny stone and dog hair for some reason. All right, so we made that. Now for this one, we need the dryad fruit, which we got when we set the dryad on fire earlier. We need bug ichor and we need changeling root. Okay, so I have to go to the swamp or the graveyard. Well, I'm not sure where the graveyard is yet. 
But I think I know where the swamp is. It is north of this area, back in the uh, in the forest. Okay. So now we have to leave this quest half finished, like the snake quest, <laughs> and go up to the swamp and try to find. The bug Ikor. Iker? Ikor? Oh, so there's the Dryad. Hang on. We'll go fight this Dryad. There, see, we set it on fire. And that's how we got fruit from it. Grab some more clay. Grab some more of this reedy twine. All right. So see, this is where we need to go to get to the swamp. The sick house of the swamp seems a final destination for those in the care of the leech. We also have to go here to do the snake quest that we started. And here. Okay. Oh, right. I've got the, the meaty morsel thing, though. Okay, hang on. We can deal with this. So there's a wolf up there. Which I'll, I'll use my witch sight. There's a guard dog. All right, so we have to go up here and toss the meaty morsel. He eats it. We can snip some dog hair off of him. And now I think we have to come over here and destroy this. Oh, I think we already did this. That's right. That's how we get changeling root. Alrighty. And then we gotta go up here to continue that quest. Okay. Right, right, right. Okay, there's one more fairy circle we have to destroy, but it's guarded by trolls and we can't deal with them until we can make the dreadful doll. And we can't make the dreadful doll until we have... The Skeeter Snoot. Right. Okay, that's why we need to go into the swamp. Alright, into the swamp. And I think this is where I'm going to stop today. Because I have been playing this for a while, <laughs> which is great because I love it. I've been so excited for this to come out. I'm just dealing with some more spam in the chat room. Sorry about that. Wish YouTube would get on top of that. I've been getting a whole lot of spam. I haven't been streaming that often on YouTube, but when I do, I'm getting tons of spam. There we go. Oh, you're welcome, Herman. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, I've been so excited for this game to come out ever since I tried the demo, and I felt really bad that I had technical difficulties with my demo when I streamed it on Twitch. And I wasn't able to edit it into a video to show you guys because I was just, I was so excited. I had so much fun playing it and I was so excited for it to come out. 
I have literally been counting the days because I thought it was going to come out in November because they said it would be out in fall of this year. And so I thought, well, November at the latest, right? And so, you know, I'm waiting and waiting and waiting through November. And then they announced that it would be December 9th. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I had to wait even longer. Uh, and I've just been counting the days till this came out. Uh, and it, this is a review copy, a streaming copy that was sent to me by the publisher. So I did not pay for it, but I would have. I mean, they're the ones that emailed me because I had played Teacup and um, Calico, which are both Whitethorn. They were published by Whitethorn Digital. Um, and so I'm on their mailing list and stuff. They know I like their games and they emailed me and said, do you, do you want a, you know, a copy of this to stream? And I said, absolutely. <laughs> I would I would have bought it anyway. <laughs> um, it's only $19.99 on console, uh, Nintendo Switch, Xbox, and PlayStation. And it's $17.99 if you play it on Steam, GOG.com, or Epic Game Store. So... Yeah, it's it's not a super expensive game, but I mean, I think there's going to be a ton of content because I still have a lot of areas I haven't visited, a lot of quests I haven't finished. There are 12 souls that I have to capture and give to the goat. Um, and right now, I've, I'm only working on the first four. <laughs> That's what you've been watching me do this whole stream. Um, so, you know, it's probably going to be... One, two, three. I'd guess at least three more live streams, maybe, for me to get through it. Maybe more. Four? Four or five? I don't know. But I think that's a, a good amount of, of gameplay. And and I appreciate that. I like a game that... Um, I, I've kind of gotten more into indie games lately just because I like smaller, manageable games. I don't have a lot of time to play games. And if I'm playing a large game, it just ends up dragging on and on. I mean, look at Fallout 3. I mean, I've been playing Fallout 3 for over a year now. Because it's just a big game. And I want to play it all. But, you know, it just takes so much time. And I haven't been able to play and stream every day anymore like I used to. So I like these smaller indie games that don't take quite as long. <laughs> don't take as much of a commitment. You play it and they're fun and you're done and then you can, you know, you can move on. <laughs> sure, George, thanks for stopping in and thanks to Starfish and Chapic for stopping in, Celtic Granny, Patrick, I Stella. Thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon. I really appreciate it. Uh, Patreon is patreon.com slash jewelsmith. And every little bit helps. Helps me buy games, buy equipment, pay my internet. <laughs> pay for the high-speed internet. So I can stream in, what is it, 1080p or whatever. Um, <laughs> and one of these days, if I can ever get a hold of one, I'll be buying a PlayStation 5 and an Xbox X. So... <sighs> Got to get ready for God of War Ragnarok. <laughs> Alright, everybody. If you want to find out more about this, it's super easy. Just Google Witchwood uh, with a Y. And uh, you can follow him on Twitter. It's uh, developed by Alien Trap and published by Whitethorn Digital. Hope to see you next time. I'm hoping I'll be able to stream some more of this tomorrow, but I've got a lot going on. So, uh, oh no, because tomorrow's Friday, isn't it? Yeah, so if I stream anything, it's going to be Stardew Valley with Istella and Sulphur. Uh, we've been playing that on Fridays. Unless one of them is not available or I'm not available. Uh, if one of them is not available, then I'll probably stream some more Witchwood. If I can stream. If I'm not too busy in the afternoon, it depends on what's going on. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you Sunday. I try to take Saturdays off now and not stream, but I'm so excited to play this, though I might. <laughs> I might stream it on Saturday. I don't know. I, I, I can't make any promises. <laughs> but take care of yourselves. Until next time. <laughs>